From the studio known for the game equivalent of a root canal comes another brutal masterpiece to grind your face against. But this time, it's even more Japanese. The monkey in the green kimono is the hearing monkey. Sekiro, shadows die twice. Return to Sekiro's dark fantasy version of Japan, a world full of misty mountains, bottomless pits, and grapple points where every important guy you meet is like three feet taller than you. <clears throat> My eyes are down here, big boy. Experience a completely new flavor of constantly dying with just enough of the trademark soul stuff to make you comfortable. Except now, being a turtled up coward doesn't work anymore. And you have to master timing-based sword fights that feel like a mix of Bushido Blade and Punch-Out forcing you to either learn the game's mechanics or go write editorials about why they should add an easy mode. Nothing humbles a man like getting demolished by a giant rooster. Get to know Sekiro, a dishonored shinobi and six million yen man who must rescue his child master with the ability to get infinitely murdered and give everyone around him the plague as punishment for you sucking. When opposing forces try to take his ward's magical child power for their own, a story will unfold that is actually sort of coherent for a FromSoft game. Even though most of it is still hidden in vague character interactions and item text. And the good endings are locked behind a bunch of bullshit you definitely won't find without a wiki. Look, if these games weren't hard and obscure, how else would we gatekeep them on the internet? Sneak into the stealth action of Shadows Die Twice that will have you grappling from roof to roof, silently taking out enemies like you're in a Tenchu game, and doing everything in your power to give yourself a chance against the next jerk-off with two health bars, or whatever nonsense they throw between you and the next bonfire, idol, whatever. It's a lot more fun than rolling around in a loincloth. Master the game's rock, paper, katana swordplay, where you'll use one sword the entire game, and you'll like it. As the action RPG combat is set aside for fights that play more like puzzles, where well-timed parries, dodges, and strikes open your opponent up for instant death blows, clever use of your arm tools make impossible fights achievable, and your enemies telegraph their unguardable attacks 10 minutes ahead of time that you'll still get hit with for 90% of your health. But you'll keep coming back for that rush of endorphins you've trained your brain to dump when you hit those perfect parries. Because beating a boss in this game feels so much better than having any real accomplishments. So put your best arm forward and get ready to rue the day you ever bought this hateful masterpiece as you live some of the highest highs and lowest lows in modern gaming and experience a carrot and stick style of design that takes it to the extreme. But the stick is covered in fire ants and the carrot is also covered in fire ants. F you from software, never change. Starring Inspector O Gadget, Haku, Emma Mess You Up, Blacksmith Andre, but with wood. Kid Thunder, trying really hard to not just name Naruto characters. Lu Bu, screw you. Meet the DK crew. DK, Donkey Kong. The last member of the D- Oh God, where did his head go? Bishimon. Master Splinter, your skull. Hayachi. Shenron. And Yamato Man. Neo Geo, oh, I'm dying a lot. The thing I missed about the Souls games the most? Everyone laughing like a maniac at the end of their monologues. <laughs> Tell us what you'd like to hear in our honest voices in the comments below.